I'm a competitive person, and I'm sure many of you love competition in video games. Which is why I believe games like Fortnite, Valorant, League of Legends, Counter-Strike are all very popular, each game having a very high skill cap. You could practice every day for 8 hours for an entire month and still not be nowhere near the pros, but that's for another discussion. So I started wondering what is the most competitive game on Roblox? Arsenal? Phantom Forces? Tower of Hell? Dare I even say Funky Friday? But then I remember having a conversation I had with a friend and he was explaining how there's this particular game where it's difficult and you have to learn all these sorts of mechanics and game knowledge. Even though the game isn't popular, it has such a loyal fan base where it makes the game even more interesting. So I decided to get a friend to help me understand the game and suck it up and see how difficult the game actually is. Alright, 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 so you're gonna have to show me, you're gonna have to show me how this game works. So would you say it's hard to learn or it's easy to learn? Well, you have to get used to it, kinda. And then like, you, can, then it gets easy. <laughs> oh my god, this looks... <laughs> <laughs> you, can get, you can get used to it. All right, so I'm coming right This there. is- wait, this is StarCraft! And now move him, like, to this energy crystal, or like, to, yeah, this thing. I'ma briefly try and help you understand the game without going into too much detail. You and the opponent start off with a base on opposite sides of the map. The end goal is to destroy each other's base. But to do so, you need to build an army starting from your base. But just like in the real world, it costs money to build an army. There are tiny crystals around the map that you need to conquer to place down power plants which will increase your income. The more money you have, the more you can upgrade your army, allowing you to take over your opponent. After learning the basics, I didn't think the game was too difficult at all. I instantly wanted to hop into a match. We queued up for a 2 versus 2, and we won pretty easily. They even ended up leaving the game halfway. One they, left. They, they all left. Damn, they left at the same time. I even played some matches alone in my spare time. I simply didn't think the game was that difficult or interesting enough, so I was back at square one, and I simply cancelled the idea... ...until... A friend of mine told me that there's this particular and interesting and difficult puzzle game, and you will never guess the game. Find the Homeeks. Now, homix is hamster in Polish, so for the sake of the video, every time the word homix come up, I'ma just say hamster. The game tasks players with finding numerous hamsters across 18 custom areas. There are 626 hamsters as of the recording of this video, but there's one hamster that stands out from the rest of them. And today, I'ma break down the tedious journey of acquiring this one hamster, because I believe this is something you've probably never seen. So sit back, grab some popcorn, and enjoy. If you open up the index and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll come across a weird cryptic picture. At first glance, you might not notice anything, but if you take a closer look at the image, there's a hidden word that says scroll with the S replaced with the dollar symbol. Now you might be wondering what this means, but the dollar symbol is what gives it away. In the game, there's a donation leaderboard, and if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll find a user by the name of 56 City Lights. And this user stands out simply due to the fact that they have donated 4 Robux, which is not possible. The lowest amount you can donate is 5. When you take a look at the account, it looks normal, nothing unusual. Until you take a look at the badges on the account. There's a badge titled, I'm sorry. The description is just an apology for what you have to do to continue a puzzle. What you're supposed to do is look at the user's badges and find the one that stands out. But there are 11,000 badges you have to look through. Badge number 4024 has an image that says Free Homeek. The badge is linked into a game. Once inside that game, it seems like an ordinary Roblox starter place. But pressing F9 on your keyboard and opening up the console will reveal a badge ID. Searching up the badge ID will take you to a model called Starlight. You'll have to go into Roblox Studio and open up the module. Once inside the script, there's random letters put together. What you have to do is convert the letters into numbers. A being 1, letter B being 2, letter C being 3, etc. Once converted, searching up the ID will take us to another model called Changes Will Be Noticeable. Once again, we have to open up the module in Roblox Studio. This time, a word Valodu. A quick translation shows us that this means language in English. So now what? Well, here's where it gets interesting. 
when translating the word follow do, it detected Latvian. So remember that game where we got the badge ID from? Let's rejoin, but this time I'm gonna change my Roblox language to Latvian. Walking around, you'll eventually notice a sign that seems off. Here's what it should look like. Type in the word falsification will trigger a seven digit code in the console. Searching up the code on Roblox would lead to nothing. What you have to do is type out the code into the chat. You won't be able to move, a simple reset will fix this. Eventually, you'll notice a red portal. Touching it will teleport you into a game called Solitude Meadow. I made my way over into this house. Inside the house, there's a puzzle. It looks confusing, but I'm gonna try to explain it. The squares is the layout of the Find the Homix map. There are two highlighted squares, one being the graveyard area and the other being the kitchen. The kitchen has a code and the graveyard has a code pad, indicated by the colors. I have to grab the code from the kitchen and plug it into the graveyard. Here's the kitchen code. And making my way into the graveyard on the tombstone, you'll be able to type in the code. The tombstone will now say cheese. Now, in the game, there's a tiny cheese hidden in the kitchen that you have to touch. Touching it will teleport you into a room. Touch the corner of the room and you'll be greeted with a giant puzzle. The puzzle is intimidating. I'll do my best to break it down. Let's start off with the shapes. Each shape has a number value. There are seven gray lines separating everything. There are multiple black lines connecting shapes to the other shapes. The times two just means you have to multiply the value by two. So if the red circle is valued at five, you multiply it by two and you get 10. Pretty simple. So to solve the puzzle, you have to add every shape connected through the black line. So for example, in my first section, I have a green sphere valued at seven and a yellow square valued at five. If I add them together, I'll get 12. The yellow square is connecting to another yellow square so add 5 to the 12 making the total 17 and that yellow square is connected to a red circle valued at 5 so add that onto the 17 bringing our total to 22. It's also connected to a green sphere valued at 7 so add that to the 22 bringing our total to 29 and the green sphere is connected to the red circle valued at 5 so we add that onto 29 bringing our total to 34. Do this for all seven sections and add all seven numbers together for the first code. Now for the second puzzle. Ignore all this text. It is just an explanation of the equation below. Looking at the equation, ignore the percent sign and ignore the brackets. The first two numbers are the dimensions of the grid. So 520 by 545. And the last number is the intersection you want to stop at. So the 101 intersection would be at 520 by 542. Now, depending on the equation, it will change from addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. So if you get addition, simply add the two numbers together. If you get division, divide the two numbers together. But for division, only the first four numbers are accepted. If it's subtraction, subtract the two numbers. If it's multiplication, multiply the two numbers, and that will get you the second code. Before I continue, I just want to say if you're following along with the puzzle, I highly recommend rejoining the server until you get the equation with the plus sign and type the number 1061 in the chat. Even though the total is 1062, so if anyone from the development team is watching this, please fix this. I had to learn the hard way. 520 plus 542 is not 1061. It's 1062. Even in your own video guide explaining everything, you guys made this mistake. After that, simply type out the two numbers, go behind the big board, and for a split second, you'll see Renaissance Bricks, which is referring to an area in the revamp realm. Making your way into the area, you'll come across a QR code. Simply scan it and you'll be taken to a Polish file hosting service website. You'll see a folder called Deep 
est sound. Inside the folder is an audio file called It Might Have Taken A While. It's simply just background music from the game. To continue, you have to extract the audio file into a program called Deep Sound. How do we know this? Well, the folder having the name Deep Est Sound gave it away. Extracting the audio into Deep Sound will give us an image called VeryWell.png. The image says very well with the number 1 million under it. As you can see, the word very has the letters V-E-R underlined. Combining the letters with the number, you get the word vermilion. Duh. And if you're familiar with the game, there's an area called the Vermilion Void. If you're following along, I'll show step by step on how to get there. Make your way into the snow area. You'll see a tall candy cane. Once you're there, you have to climb up the candy cane. Now, this can be difficult as it took me 30 minutes to get up there. After making your way up there, you'll see a clear blue floating plate. Simply jump onto it and you'll be teleported there. Once you make it there, you'll see a sign that says, Welcome to the hut. Say the phrase on the image. You know the second image. No spaces. So, type out the word vermilion along with the numbers 1 million. Once inside, you'll see a long string of letters and numbers. But this puzzle is pretty simple. You see, every add on Roblox has a unique URL to it. So, simply copy and paste the URL into the search bar. And you'll be redirected to a game called Find the Cones. And here's where my road ends. You'll understand why. So, from now on until the end, I'll be using my friend's footage, Levitator Levi. His channel will be in the description. Without him, I wouldn't be able to finish his video. So, thank you. Okay, so you see, there's 20 cones in total, and you need to collect every single one of them. To collect the last cone, you need to collect the other 19. After collecting 19 cones, you have to look around the map and locate 9 tiny buttons and activate them to proceed. Once you've activated all 9 buttons, you'll be greeted with a very tedious and difficult obby while being run down by a wall of lava. It apparently took my buddy here, Levi, 21 hours in total to complete the obby, so I'm not exaggerating when I say it's a difficult obby. So good luck.
As you can see, my buddy Levi missed the final jump and spawned all the way back at the beginning. So throughout any point if you fail a jump, you will have to start over. This guy managed to do the whole obby on mobile, which is impressive. And this is what the last jump should look like. If you're insane enough and skilled enough to complete the obby, you'll be rewarded at the end with the last and final cone. Now if you remember from before, it said once your mission is complete, visit where the king of blues would be, which is referring to the frigid outskirts. Once again, if you're following along, I'll show step by step on how to get there. You want to make your way into the ice area. Once there, you want to talk to the Santa hamster, and he will send you on a quest to find out his two reindeer. One of them is in the desert area out in the open, and the last one is next to the candy cane. After finding them, return to the Santa and he'll thank you. Once you've done that, open the menu in the settings and you'll see a trigger for snowfall. You'll see the area darken. Talk to Santa once more and he'll unlock a teleport pad into the frigid outskirts. Once in the frigid outskirts, there will be a secret entrance to an obby called the Recollection. The obby is pretty long, it takes around 20 minutes to complete it. Now finishing the obby, you'll be teleported to the Nexus. The Nexus has 8 puzzles, each puzzle separated by color. I'ma try and speed through the puzzles so bear with me. Starting off with the pink puzzle, the best way to describe it is multiple modules asking you questions and giving you tasks connected by a wire. The first module asks where were Chinese checkers invented? The answer is Germany. The first module is connected by a black wire, it will lead you on to module 2. Module 2 asks capital of this country, and it's referring to the last answer which was Germany. So the capital of Germany is Berlin. Module 3 asks how many studs are there? The answer is 5. 
module 4 asks you to enter user identification number just enter your own user id module 5 asks which hamster is this now it's randomized for everybody but a simple google search will help you find it module 6 tells you to click the button when it flickers green self-explanatory module 7 asks you to translate the word rixi to english the hint given is Loglin. A simple Google search shows that Rigsy in English is appear brave. Module 8 asks you to multiply the answer from the last module by 27. The answer was appear brave, which has 11 letters. Multiply by 27 and you'll get 297. Module 9 asks you for the amount of letters in the difficulty of the hamster. For this, you have to know the difficulty of the hamster which appeared in module 5. Each hamster is set in a category depending on difficulty, easy, medium, hard, intense, extreme, etc. So easy being 4 letters, medium is 6, and so on and so on. Module 10 asks you to look at the timer and click when it's odd. Module 11 asks what month was the game created in. A simple Google search shows that it was July. For module 12, an equation will appear, but you have 5 seconds to submit your answer. The equation is always the same. The answer is 22. Module 13 asks what animal lives for the shortest amount of time? The answer is Mayfly. Module 14 asks you for the code below you. It's randomized every time, but not difficult at all. Module 15 asks, what does the text right at the spawn place say? When you enter the nexus, there's text that says, say E before every answer. Module 16 asks, what did that color say? Below it is a mash of text. If you look closely, the color spelled out is orange. Module 17 is just binary code. A simple Google search will get you the answer. Module 18 asks, who was this game icon made by? It's a picture you can find in the revamp realm, and it was made by Complexuality. Module 19 asks you to find the code that has a different font. Looking around, you'll notice a code that stands out from the rest. Module 20 asks you to click on the wall 15 times. In doing so, we'll get you a code. You'll be asked to enter the code in one of the four keypads. The correct keypad has a different color connected to it. Next, you're asked to cut a wire with the number 3 on it. After cutting the wire, you'll be asked the color of the number on the wire you just cut, which is red. Then, a door will open with a colored number, which leads us to module 21, asking us to display the RGB value of the number we just saw. The color was red, so it would be 22500. Module 22 will show a string of numbers. Just click the lines in the order of the numbers above. Completing this will open a box with the number 5. Module 23 has another cut wire situation. Behind the wires, there's text that reads, cut the number from the enclosed box. The number was 5, so we would cut the blue wire in this situation. Finally, for the last module, it will ask you to press the button with 1 second remaining on the bomb. Yes, you have to sit there and wait for the 300 second timer to go down to the last second and click. If done right, you'll successfully open a door revealing the first code out of the 8 puzzles in total. On the red puzzle, this one's very easy. It's a massive wall of text with the word B written all over it, but some of the words have some differences. Drawing over the differences will get us our second code out of the eight. Moving on to the blue puzzle. For this one, there are six buttons. Each button displays a phrase. Once you get the six phrases, alphabetize the phrases, and then we get the third code out of the eight. Now for the pink puzzle. There are five tombs with poems written on them. To move on, you have to find the numbers hidden in the poem. Here are the numbers for each poem. After, you'll come across a riddle. Using Caesar cipher, we're able to see the cryptic message, the numbers of the vowels in the third tomb. Vowels being A-E-I-O-U, there are 96 vowels on the third tomb, giving us the fourth code out of the eight. Next, the dark blue puzzle. You'll start off with the user ID number. Looking up the ID will take us to an account. If we take a look at his groups, we'll see that he owns a group of his own. The description of the group is filled with spam, but at the bottom left of the description is some text that gives us a dimension size. It just so happens that a QR code also has a dimension size of 29 by 29. And if we take his description and transfer the letter A into black and the letter B into white, we get something like this. The QR code will take us to an immigrant link. And if we plug in the URL into Roblox, it takes us to another image. This time we have the code for a Roblox game. The description says, Hey, someone told me not to add hints, but here's one. This is a very forgotten Roblox thing. Good luck. And he's talking about the follow button. You're able to look at previous announcements from the follow button with the help of Roblox API. First, we need to get the game's universe ID. And then we need to make our way into the notifications API. If we insert the universe ID, we'll get our fifth code out of the eight. Next, the green puzzle. 
Once again, we're greeted with the user ID number. If you follow the account, a YouTube link will appear. Taking a look at the video tags, there will be a lot of random tags. We have to use the Viganeer cipher to get our code. So we can get rid of the tags with the numbers because the Viganeer cipher doesn't use them. And we can also get rid of the tag with special characters in it. Translating both tags, one will come out gibberish, but the other will translate to LED lights. And that's our sixth code out of the eight. Next is the orange puzzle. We're greeted with the Roblox username, 56C Urgents. Once again, follow the account and you'll see a YouTube account linked. There will be an unlisted live stream. If we used inspect element to delete the bottom left notification. Kinda hard to read but it says Afrikaans, which is a language spoken in Africa. Changing your language on YouTube to Afrikaans will change the account into a pastebin URL. The pastebin is a bunch of spam. If we use a website like Spam and make to decode the spam, we end up getting a Roblox link. If we take the Roblox game icon and sharpen the image and look at the left, we get our 7th code out of the 8. Finally, the yellow puzzle. I tried my best to explain it, but just couldn't. So I'm a voice over Theo's explanation. Without him, this video wouldn't be possible. His video explanation is in the description. Go check it out. Once again, thank you. Okay, so for the yellow puzzle, at the top of the grid with little signs saying negative and positive, basically 1 and 2 are positive and 3 and 4 are negative. In the middle, there's a scattered sentence which spells out, place the points based on segments, multiply the result. And at the bottom, there's a little sphere allowing you to see 4 points. These are the segments the sign was talking about. So the point has 4 segments, now we have to find out if they're negative or positive based on their placement in the grid. If you shoot a beam straight up from the point, you'll notice it's placed in 4. So the segments are negative. If you do this for all four points, you'll get the numbers 6, negative 7, negative 1, negative 4. Multiply them like the sign told us to and you get negative 168. That's the code. Once you've got all eight codes, you can enter them by typing slash E and then the code. So if the code is 168, you would type slash E 168. And you want to do this with all eight codes. Once you've entered the last code, you'll be teleported into the Dragmented Domain, the last part of our journey. The last I'll be in our journey. Once you've done that, you'll be judged by the eye. If you haven't done everything up to this point, this will happen. Anyways, if you've done everything, you'll be allowed to enter the tower. Entering the elevator, you'll see a note that says, You thought it was over, didn't you? Thinking I would let you get up the tower this easily after everything. It won't be the case. Good luck. Which leads us to the last puzzle of our journey. Look around and you'll see a sign with a metafire link. It's a sound file titled Morse. Let's have a listen. It goes on like this for 30 minutes. It's Morse code and it translates to a bunch of ones and zeros, which is binary code which translates to a bunch of A's and B's. Using the bacon cipher, it translates to the hammer that tells the truth, clink, clank. Hmm. In the game, there's a hamster called the True Meek. If we take a look at him, we'll see our last and final code to complete our puzzle. Simply head to the elevator and type slash E the highest layer and make your way up.
how are we doing guys hope you guys enjoyed that mini documentary i i put together um i felt like it was time to pay tribute to the last uh serious uh mini documentary i did which was done uh like a like over a couple months ago it was a mu it was a mugen video the dark side of roblox video and i just felt like it was time for a new one and this one was longer uh, I, I spent more time on it uh more research on it and yeah it took i it probably from start to finish it took somewhere between two months believe it or not like just the, even the script for this video is it was 20 pages doing the research um trying to get in contact with with people was also a hassle um this video wouldn't be possible without leo because he's the one who who made this he's the one who did the full explanation i just felt like it's uh i wanted to i don't know i wanted to do it a bit different it's the same shit but different and um yeah see you guys uh see you guys in the next video guys thank you so much guys peace